Alright guys, welcome back to day 6 of the machine learning 100 days of code deep learning challenge thing. What is it even? Um, by the way, tomorrow I think I'm going to try live streaming on YouTube. See how that goes. And see if there's a way to live stream on both YouTube and Twitch. Because that would be interesting. Um, but anyways, so where we left off is we created the neural network. And now we just have to compile it. So I'm going to go through and run all the cells. Shouldn't take that long. Or so one would think. Uh, meanwhile, while we're doing that, did we already compile? Okay, yeah, we already did. So we got all the way to there. So now we're doing cross-validation. Um, which makes sense. This is something you do in machine learning anyways. Um, I'm very familiar with this function. Train test split. I actually talked about it a day or two ago. Uh, it just makes getting your train training and testing data sorted out easily. So we're actually using training and validation data at this Grimby lab. Try and turn my, my music so that way you don't get copyrighted. Um, so, why train then why val instead of like why test? Because we're not going to be using our testing data. We could call this test because that's sort of what it is, but it's the nuances. Uh, why train? So we're using a test site of, of 0 0.10, and that's basically meaning that 90% of our data is going to be for training, and then we're going to test on 10% of it. Uh, I don't know how factual this is, but for me, if I was going to be using a testing size this low, I would use um, cross-validation, which that's what she says this is, but there's actually a function. Let's look it up. Cross validation sklearn. Like, there's an actual function that does this. Is this train test split? This is cross val. Anyways, the oh, it's called a. Uh, I think it's like kv fold. Kv kv fold cross validation. K fold. Okay. So what Kfold does is it takes, like, if we're using 10% as data or as a testing set and the rest is training, it's going to go through and select different 10% of the code to use as testing, and then the rest is training. So it mixes that in and uh, compares all the scores so you get a better overview. Technically, I wouldn't consider this cross-validation, but we are validating it. And this random state is just to get, uh, it's our seed. So we just wanted to produce the same result to compare to this notebook. Not entirely sure why we're using a batch size 64. Uh, I said that without thinking. Batch sizes don't really have to be a particular size. There isn't necessarily like a science as to why it is that. Um, but the size of your batches can change how well the model fits and like how long it takes to train stuff. So we're calling model.fit generator. Trying to figure out what this is doing. I believe that this part is doing the cross validation for us. So we don't really have to do it uh, verbosely. Validation data equals val batches. All right, so 
since I don't really know what this does, is I'm going to go to the Curious Fit Generator. And just understand what's doing. Fit generator. Change the model on data generated batch by batch. So this is doing cross validation. It's doing what I was just explaining with uh, K fold cross validation. Is it's going by these batch sizes, going through each one and testing them like that. As far as I can tell. So here we go. We're going through the epoch. Now take a little. So in the meantime, well, I have nothing else to do. Um, I'm thinking of starting a Python series, like a learn Python, just super basic, super minimalistic. I know that I can get through like a lot of videos really quick. And honestly, I just love Python so much that I wouldn't mind talking about it forever. So I think that'll be cool series to do and uh, I also have a Linux server that I it would be cool to show some of the Django stuff that I'm doing on there um, also through my full stack now degree I had to create like a full on list of how to harden a Linux server uh, for like web dev so I still haven't done that on my server yet so I could go through that or may not because it may not be the best thing I mean like it's not the worst thing if the server gets hacked because I don't have anything like valuable on it. Um, but yeah, I'll just I'll I'll harden it up offline and then start showing some of the stuff and like websites that I made. I have this project that I want to do is the chat app that I was talking about, and um, that's going to be a Node product with. Express and um, Socket.io, which allows for like real-time communication very easily. I got set up while I was like typing on the Linux terminal on my phone in like 20 minutes, so it's pretty easy to do. These are just going through, and the loss does eventually go down. It's actually crazy. Oh, wait, never mind. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, I thought it was this accuracy of 0.9 went down to 0.2, but it was a different number. Okay. But yeah, I want to make so much content right now. I'm also really enjoying the AI. I'm enjoying everything. I'm just on a, like, a high right now of making content and everything. I love it. Whoa, it's going backwards. What just happened? That was so weird. Once these epochs finish, shall be good. I'm not going to do this graph because it's what we expect, anyways. So. So generator is just what compiles everything, basically. At the end of the day, it runs all the epochs. Okay, so we're done. <clears throat> so this adds another layer we're at a loss of not a number hello why does nothing ever want to work My loss is not working. <laughs> Insane. Validation data.
why our losses are not a number. Generator batches. All right, let's see. Do the good old copy and pasta. How my loss is still not a number. Hmm <laughs> hmm. All right, let's test this out. Oh, it's like I found it. Yeah, it's still not a number. Not entirely sure why. I'm not sure how vital that is. Although we can't really measure how well this is going. Okay, so we're not even going to use this model. We're using a CNN, which makes sense for this project. CNNs are used for like computer vision and at least from what I know. So. Hmm. I didn't know. Yeah, it really doesn't make sense. All right, there you go. Thank you for hiding all that. So I'm just going to build the CNN, which is what's going to give us the best results, and yeah, move on. This is an old notebook, so I'm not sure like what things I'm doing wrong and what things are just because everything's been updated. difficult. Alright, lambda. This lambda um, layer again. Define our input shape. And then what uh, CNNs do is they progressively get smaller in size, like dimension wise. This is interesting. I, I like Kira's because Kira's uh, it sort of simplifies everything. Whoa, I just thought about like, what if my teacher, my old teacher from my old high school, like played these videos for his kids? That would be crazy. I feel like I'm not a good teacher. All right, and then three, three. I'm not exactly sure what all these, I'm gonna look at the documentation on this after I finish typing this. That way I can try to grasp what's going on. So this sort of turned into a series of me teaching you, but also figuring out stuff for myself too. Which is fine, but I don't know. I'm liking how I'm emphasizing documentation because I feel like a lot of coding tutorials are just like, here's how this thing works. Good luck remembering all of it. Because it took me a long time to figure out how things work. And then eventually, like, after enough time, I just gained enough awareness of, like, okay, I'm getting this error. I know what's going wrong right now. Softmax. Okay, and hopefully those activations work. Uh, so that's good, and then we want to model.compile this boy. I don't know what Adam is either. Especially confused by Adam, I don't understand what Adam is. Interesting. Okay. So we don't have that much to go. Categorical cross entropy. Now I'm going to have to message my teacher. Be like, hey, if you need some content, I'm your boy. Alright. That and then model equals get CNN model tab work. Nope. 
model dot optimizer dialer. It's actually funny is now I live like right next to that old high school. <laughs> That's interesting. Learning rate. So we're just, we're just calling, we're sending that model equal to the model, this convolutional neural net, and then setting our learning rate to 0 0.1. Uh, I said again instead of git, and it doesn't like soft max activation. So how about we do another relu? It's okay with that. It does not like soft max anymore. All right. So now we're going to do the same thing, I believe. And yeah, we're just running the fit generator to actually compile and go through and cross validate and train our neural net. And like, obviously I could copy and paste everything in here, but it's definitely much better to type it out yourself because if nothing else, you're building up that map muscle memory <laughs> don't take an hour please Oof. Mm, it's going to take a bit of a while it'll just be interesting seeing our accuracy go down because I don't know what's going on with the loss right now why it's not a number meantime we can see what's going on here So she's talking about data augmentation, or it's also probably called, I don't know if this is technically normalization. Um, yeah, so it's normalization. This is batch normalization. Uh, let me go back and look at the convo neural net. While this runs, it's going to take a while. I'm not going to fully let it go because that would be this entire video. Um, convolution 2D, here it is. Just sort of read up on what's going on here. Spatial convolution over images is the 2D. Temporal All right, so uh, well that hence the name of 1d Com uh, Conv 1d is just for a one-dimensional thing which I'm trying to think of what that would be I'm not sure what would be like one dimensional that you use a convo neural net for but 2d makes sense because we have Two dimensions of pictures. We only have one color channel uh, if we had all three though, then that would be th three different um, images of 28 by 28 pixels. But we only have one machine right here. And it really doesn't matter uh, how many like color channels you have I mean like you usually have RGB so the 2d isn't well like we are messing with the 2d image right here just on a red color channel and then we do the same thing mess with the 2d color image on a blue spectrum and then it combines all that it's taken a long time. And probably like all my computing power. <laughs> yeah, all my computing power. Rip the CPU. Get the idea though that this model that fit generator actually processes our model. So I'm gonna stop that. I'm going to save this notebook and call it good on that guy. It's going to be the same thing here. We're just adding batch normalization. Um, 
which helps tune hyperparameters more better and train really deep neural networks um, because normalizing the data just makes it easier for the model to fit to it because there's not as so much variance in between like the inputs that you're giving it uh, as far as I understand. So let's finish the rest of this code. Might as well. And then off camera, I'll run this and get a result. But I'd like to have this all documented so that way I can have the results here. Don't know why it's saying non number for loss. That might be a thing that I check out later. It's unfortunate. So in this case, because I already have written this, I'm going to copy this top one. It's the same code, just moved over a little. Okay, there we go. And then all we did was just add a couple of batch normalization layers in between our combos. We have max pooling. Um, I'm going to read up on what max pooling is real quick. Max pooling 2D. I feel like it's another normalization thing. Pooling layers. Um, for spatial data. So want to explain what it does. What does max pooling do? Oh, it's getting the highest value inside of a, from that. So it's getting the highest value out of these separate quadrants. I assume that's just to make it easier on the neural net. Is to down sample and, yep, exactly. So this is how convo neural nets work and this actually makes more sense to me. I understand this. Um, so convo neural nets eventually get smaller and smaller over time um, as you go deeper in the layers and it does this I think by max pooling so it takes the greatest value out of the quadrant and then that's what the new value is right so it, this is actually a pretty good picture of it so you have all this data right here right but then you're just compressing it down into fewer pixels I also want to go to see why this number goes up so these go up these are the filters and filters that I, the dimensionality of the output space number of output filters in the convolution so using a max pooling, we actually increase our filters, which is dimensionality. We double it. Why would that happen? Not sure why our dimensionality would go. Why does dimensionality go up with max pooling? Reducing its... I may not fully understand what filters are. Hmm, that's strange. I do not fully understand that, but anyways, let's go back to whatever I was doing. All right, yeah, we're, we're looking at the code. We're looking at this kernel. Go max pooling, and then we do batch normalization again. And just do this in between all the convo, or all the layers that are not or that are like dealing directly with the image.
Ah, uh, there's so much I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> humbling, but still, like, I've listened to people talk about this before. I just either, I guess, didn't pay attention or just went right through my head. Layers at normalization. Dot. All right, so again, whoa. Model equals get BM model. Optimizer dot learning rate equals 0 0.01. History equals model dot fit generator steps per epoch foundation data it's about batches I'm going to quickly go back up to Val Batches and just check it out and see if I can find a reason why this is not working because I want it to work. Showed the loss. And it thinks that's marked down. Nice. Well, this is code. That's why it's been so weird. Okay, it's working. Did I mess up before? I have no idea why it's working now. All right, if I go up and run this and it works, I don't know what I did again. We had this problem before where it, was, it didn't work. I ran a different one and then it started working again. Triggered, super trig, super trig, anometry, fit, the high, yeah, thank you. The fit, meant disappear. This one's gonna be even slower, I can already tell you. But this will fit it the best. You can already see this is amazing. Just as our batches or our um, runs through. Yeah, th this is each batch in 64. You can just see our loss going down. Started out at like eight. But yeah, that's going to take far too long. Oh. So we lost it. Hmm. Interesting. That's interesting. I don't know why it's doing that. But I'm going to call it good. There. Unfortunately, this is a uh, very old notebook, and I don't want to waste my time getting into it. Now I have a good understanding of Kira's, Kira's, Kira's tutorial. I need somebody, I need to hear somebody say it. Five seconds. Talk about it. Karis. Okay, that's, that's fine. Oh, nobody could hear that. Okay, that's probably good. I won't be struck down with copyright claim. Uh, <laughs> okay, we're going to get on that notebook. Uh, that's annoying that that is so long. Uh, anyways. I have a good understanding of that. I'm thinking that I want to go do, yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'm gonna move over and do the TensorFlow implementation of this. Close out our notebook or restart it, I guess. I didn't have to do that. Go back up here. So let's do this one. Deep learning with TensorFlow. Here we go. So now we know that, we know like a little bit about the workflow, that there's a good chance that we're gonna need to, um, well, we're gonna use a combo. No, I'm not, I know that we're gonna need that. Um, hmm, what else do we need? 
There's definitely stuff that we did before. I'm just going to look at what we need to import. I know that we'll need to import Numpy. We'll need to import Pandas as PD, as MP. Um, is TensorFlow updated? I'm going to kill this kernel real quick. TensorFlow. Python TensorFlow. Python. TensorFlow. Import TensorFlow. TensorFlow. Upgrade Anaconda. Just make sure that we're up to date on everything. I had such problems installing TensorFlow in the past. Uh, not with native pip. If we can install with Anaconda, that'd be great. Appreciate you. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. <laughs> okay. CLS. Okay. Our creating environment. Great. I love it. Python. Hello equals 3.5. I'm really out of it today. <sighs> I think I like five hours of sleep the night before. It's okay. We're doing it. We're grinding it out. I should really open up my window. It's getting hot in here. There we go. I have to upgrade all these packages. I haven't touched this stuff in a while. Anyways, uh, I could start doing this. So, like, here's what I want to do. Uh, list of video ideas. A like Python tutorials, Django tutorials. Um, 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 um. Node.js slash express slash socket.io tutorials. I'm excited. I think socket.io. I'm not sure how many people have socket.io things. Um, install <laughs> Node.js. I had such problems installing Node. Uh, just install this here. List of video ideas. It's great. It's in Python scripts now. That's exactly where it belongs. Okay. Conda activate TensorFlow. So we're creating a virtual environment is good. It's a GPU version. I want to use this because it'll make the training time faster. If you don't have a GPU, then there's really no point. So good luck. Alright. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is one of the projects uh, the AI slash ML challenge. This is one of the projects that I thought was going to be cool, and I've been wanting to do this for a while. And it's already out there. Like, I'm not the first one to think of this. Definitely not. It's such a common thing and so easy to do. Um, create an Android app that does deep learning style transfer. Style transfer is awesome. Um... We can actually do that one day with TensorFlow because it's just like 10 lines of code. Uh, deep learning style transfer. So if you don't know, style transfer just basically applies a theme of an image over another image as to create this arch. Um, in a Van Gogh sort of painting style, which I think is awesome. I like love this. This is one of my favorite things about deep learning. So yeah, I want to create a Android app that allows you to take a picture of anything. Um, you can also take a picture of another painting too and apply that. Or there will be a like um, catered pictures, I guess, just like the Van Gogh picture or whatever. 
basically just a ton of different pings that you can choose from that automatically apply it. I know that you can't connect, I'm so sorry. Can you save? You can't save. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't. Oh, did I set that as a Python? I'm confused. Okay. TensorFlow is installed. I think that's all we have to do. I can close all these tabs. We ain't worried. We'll just make sure that our TensorFlow imported correctly. Import error. Why did you do that? All right, we're gonna go with this guy. Just install this. But yeah, we can do that with TensorFlow, and I think that'll be a cool thing to just do. Um, I, I've been wanting to create apps, but it's a way to combine the app with this challenge and just do style transfer too, which is one of my favorite things of deep learning. I'm going to pass out. Ugh. My wrist hurts too. So yeah, that's sort of what I want to do. Python tutorials, I hope to just create like a really long series with that that starts at like very basics. Obviously, I don't think if anybody's watching this video that you'd really start off there, but um it'd be like what's a string like start off talking about the object so um, different data types and I like having my own spin on teaching this because I'm going through ComSci classes right now and I've I've gone through so many in the past and I just sort of hate how they all talk about like okay here's how like many bytes a it has like a beginning programmer does not need to know that information. You're just making it more stressful and making it seem like very difficult to understand. Let's see if this is working. A beginner does not need to know really about the hardware stuff. You're just going to confuse them at that point. TF.constant. Hello, TensorFlow. Uh, sesh equals tf dot session. All right, that worked. I guess I don't even need run print. There we go. So we are working. Cool. Yeah, that went a lot smoother than it did last time, so we're going to go back to running our Jupyter Notebook and get back in here. This guy, this guy, this guy. Deep learning with TensorFlow. Let's go ahead and start off by importing all the... So, import all the needed libraries. So import numpy as np, import, I'm just, uh, pand is what I was looking for, but matplotlib as plt, percent matplotlib in line, tensorflow.tf, or as tf. Make sure this all works. Cool. Um, we're gonna go with convolutional neural net. Convolutional neural networks. Expertise and experience. That's what I got. That's what I got, guys. All right. So this is good. Um, it has a f a fake data set, a different data set than the one that we're using for this project. Um, and so. 
it's actually nice because that allows us to just like see how they're applying it to a different problem and then transfer that over to our problem. My hair is all over the place. My brain is all over the place. Cool, C for 10, you do that. So they also have another max pooling. I wonder if there's a better explanation max pooling here. Nope, <laughs> not all. I mean, I understand what it does now. Uh, So I think softmax is, I mean, like obviously we saw with that past one and then they're using it here too. Um, so I think it's probably like the right thing to use in this situation. Uh, we will have to import the data and I liked what she did at the beginning. This is what I couldn't remember at first. So let's, uh, let's get a grasp on the data. All right. So, test data equals pd.read csv. Now what I want, just show me my file. CSV, test. Okay, I, for, I forgot what they were called. Test.head, test.shape. data. This is a rough day. Ooh, ooh. Also, um, <laughs> we got to wrap these around print too so that way we can see both these. Alright, well that does that real quick. Um, I also want to create I want to look into creating an Alexa voice controlled game. Got the idea from Gary V the other night, last night. Uh, I was listening to his podcast and he was talking about somebody creating like a old like game from the 80s uh, as a voice game. And I just thought that's like really cool and that would be fun to do. And it's actually would be pretty creative. All right, so we already sort of looked at this data before, but... We have all pixels? What if... Train. <laughs> train. I'm dumb. Train. 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 I was missing the label, and that's why I was confused. But this looks more like it. We have four... 42,000 training um, tests. So we duplicate these. Cell. No. Uh, we'll call this on the training data. Now that we went through this all before, but it's really good to just do this again. Let's get a grasp on the testing data. It's really good to do this multiple times because then you just get it ingrained into your head. And this is how you strengthen the neural connections in your head that make it really easy to remember what you're doing. Head print test data dot shape. All right, and then I want to do something like a little bit like this. Let's run this. Cool. So we just know that it doesn't have the label. Um, and I want to compare the test and training data set. So all I want to do is just see, I just want to compare the rows of like what percentage. You don't have to do this, but. Interesting test. So test data to shape. Do I want this on the top or the bottom of that? We want this on the top. Shape zero. So we're getting the rows divided by the train data dot shape. Go zero. 
so two thirds of our data is in. Am I doing this math right? Probably not. Would this be like four six? Oh wait, we want to do this if we want to compare how much. Uh, I like doing things first before I actually think of like how it actually should be. <laughs> All right, so we have 40% test data and then we have 60% train data. That's cool. Let's get me started on not what I need. Importing data. Do you actually import this from a... I know that we actually did something like this where we changed the data type. Uh, if we run into that, I'm probably about to get stuck right now. Um, I'm just going to try and keep on going without looking up anything as long as I can. So we have the training data. So we're soon going to need to get that into TensorFlow, but first we're going to need to say our X train is equal to train data dot drop the first column. So, which is called label, axis equals one. Is that thrown error? No? Okay, then did something wrong. Uh, <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I did that right. I'm actually really happy that that worked. Okay, so that's good. So we have X train and then. Y train will equal uh, our train data. I think it's just this label. And I think it's actually two columns. I never learned why, or I did at one point but forgot. That's a common theme with me. And there we go. Beautiful. Works like a charm. So there we go, our data is, I'm just going to copy this into here. I'm going to comment this in that we are just um, separate pixels from label. Cool, cool, cool. That's good. Now we need to learn how we're actually going to set up a TensorFlow convolutional neural network. Like how to even start it. I can't remember. Yeah, I completed it all right. Uh, I understand this. I just don't know what I need to do to start off. So we're going to follow, I'm going to read up on this as we're going through it. I want to look for a basic Oh, here we go. There's something right here. So this is actually our training set. I can't remember if we were the ones that, is this already grayscale? No, it's 0, 0.255. So what they're doing right here is uh, normalizing it. So we, will, we shall do the same. You could do it the fancy way of just having Kira's, Kira's download it for you. 
I'm always going to mess up saying that. Uh, and we don't even have to worry about this. X test equals test data. And we'll do this. X test equals all we're doing is just normalizing them. So it's going to be anywhere from 0 to 1, I believe. So let's just theorycraft this because it'll be 1 if the thing is 255, right? Because 255 divided by 255 is 1. If it's like 1 divided by 255, it's super low number, yeah. So we're normalizing it between 0 and 1. Uh, that's a lie. Thank you. No, no, no. What am I doing? actually using curious interesting and also this is using dense it's a sequential it's not a combo so are these sort of like two merging I'm not sure if these two libraries are merging together or not hmm <sighs> okay. Well, why don't we go through this, I guess? <laughs> so, sequential model equals tf.curious.model models dot sequential. I do feel better about this, though, because it is documentation, although I don't appreciate how it's just, like, literally what we're looking at. I guess that's what we get because we're dealing with the most popular machine learning or yeah, machine learning, deep learning data set for computer vision that there is. So I'm just glad that I get to use different activation functions and I think that is important. Um, not exactly sure what each benefit is, but here's the layers that dance. Activation equals tf softmax. I'm going to still use this model.compile. See, now I'm starting to get the hang of it. I was like, now that we're basically using queries with the TensorFlow backend, which is what we were doing before, too. Um, you know, it's the same thing. You set up your model at this part at the first stage and you set up your compiler by using oh that's why the last wasn't working where are you at let's check this out just want to go to wherever we put the loss categorical tr cross entropy Categorical. Sorry to lazy. Yeah, nothing's changing there, so. Yeah, not as good as I thought it was going to be. Never mind. <laughs> thought I was finding something very good. I'm so dehydrated. Truly get a good score. Um, we'll have to actually run this model. I need to declare why test, I guess.
so we can't actually evaluate it yet. Dot flatten. Hello. I may not have, I don't understand. TensorFlow is not attribute queues. Is there a different like way that you I think it saved it, hopefully. <laughs> uh, let's just do this. Import or from TensorFlow import queries. And that worked. Okay. I hit everything. What it worked. Connect. I think it's back up. We'll see. Can we run? What did I just do? So, run all. Actually, stop it. Do this. Oh, we're in the different one. Okay, I was very confused as to what was going on. From TensorFlow import queries. Run all. <sighs> Stop this. It works outside of it. Run all. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So I'm in this environment, which might be the problem. We're releasing it, deactivate, releasing to the wild. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to installing TensorFlow. Copy this. Install it. I don't know why this isn't working. I'm so annoying. But hey, I'm starting to learn this by myself, so this is where I get lost and prosper. Power through. So really quickly, I'm just going to try and run this. Hopefully it works. If not, I'm going to stop for the day because it's been an hour and I'm tired. And I have a book on AI to read too. I hope this is interesting to somebody. Hopefully. Only someone can hope so. It's 
cool is I have 11 subs now. And... Here's scoliosis video has not even been uploaded yet. Why not? Work. Oh my god. This video is so long. It was half an hour long. It's actually the reason why I didn't live stream today. Because I thought it wouldn't help it. Telling to come out at eight. Get shareable link. Gotta edit my descriptions video quick. All right, description has been updated. That's good. All right, let's run this notebook again. Let's get it. All right, better work this time, buddy. I need you to work. Run all. Please work. It's good. Mm, okay, that's better. That's a different air. <laughs> we getting somewhere. Uh, I clicked on curious and didn't mean to. Yeah, don't we need optimizer? Optimizer. There we go. <gasps> X train's not to find where you're talking about, buddy. It's actually capital. And what's your problem now? Whoa. Please provide as model inputs either a single array or you passed X equals. So I really quickly want to run just want to do an X train here, see what our data looks like. Uh, oh, well, let's see it as a numpy array. Let's see if converting into a numpy array helps fix anything. Just because it was a pandas data frame exactly is what we want to see. And look at this loss. It's going down steadily. And doesn't take forever to train. This is good stuff. This is why I do this. Our loss is going down. That's awesome. So we're already below. What loss are we using? Sparse. I don't know how like high this goes. Oh god. Okay. I should probably just let my computer chill and run this. Ah. Uh. You know, toting, uh, toting, coding can be tough and not make sense, especially if you're me and don't know how to code. Um, but eventually it becomes worth it and it's awesome. I think it's really cool. So we ended up with a loss of 0.29. If we go to sparse categorical entropy, categorical, blah, blah, blah. Uh, tell me what's the range. So what do I need to do to submit this? Evaluation, submission file format. So I need to output the predictions. So how do I get my model to do that? So that is basically save and load. Um. We don't want to save the entire model, we just want to check its guess. Let's see. Um, get predicted values, curious.
fit and then all right so this looks like it's saying and don't want to run this again so insert cell below looks like we want to do model dot predict classes what is test x in this case oh okay um our x test and then pass it the verbose argument of one. Oh. <laughs> okay. Wow. That was easy. Yeah, don't do it manually. Let the program do it. Okay, so now we need to go so this is gonna be a numpy array, so we're saying results equals this. So add that back up. Iterate ran, we're good. Um, so let's just print out results. It's an array, so now what do we need to do? We need to have a file that says this. So we're going to create a uh, results uh, output equals pd.dataframe and then results output dot columns equals this list of columns which will be image ID and then label <laughs> yeah it's good and then image ID so it just has to be the index all right so we're not even gonna how to set the index. So we need to know set the index of a data frame. Name of index. All right. <laughs> so the columns is just this. And then we want to say results output dot index dot name is going to be equal to uh, what the hell? What was it? Okay, I'm really struggling here. I want to submit this before I end the video. Let's just see if I can get through this without it throwing an error. Huh, Jk. I think I can honestly just do this results output boom do this and then we're saying that the label is equal to results I think that should work uh, okay results output at least we didn't get an error image ID what mm. <laughs> Why must you start there? Uh, start pandas data frame at one in there. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Oh, wow. This is the second time that's rained today. Check out the vlog for what happened to me. Pretty insane. Not really, but <laughs> I got rained on. It was fun. Uh, okay, so we're close, and then I just want to say results output dot index plus equals one. Thank you. Okay, cool. So now we're just going to say results output dot to CSV, and then our file name is uh, our sequential model dot CSV. Cool. So now if we check out our directory.
over here, we go over to Digital Recognizer, we now have sequentialmodel.csv. Look at this, these are all of our guesses. So let's go over to Digital Recognizer, submit a prediction right about now. Fuck so brother, check it out now. Uh sequential model. What do I need to do? Subscribe submission? You make me sad. Subscribe my submission. 0.91. That's not too bad for a basic model, you know? We weren't really optimized, and this was just a tutorial by TensorFlow, so. Had some pretty good luck. So, out of all the people that submitted this, which I imagine is a lot. Maybe not. Uh oh. Okay, so I had 2,631 people who have submitted this. 2,385. Killing it. Okay, so now that I have a better understanding of uh, TensorFlow and Curies, I'm going to spend some time with it. I'm going to start to learn it more. Um, and hopefully build. I'm just going to evolve more models to work better. So. That's cool. So, that's just the start. I'm only going to keep on getting better. Thank you if you made it to the end of this video. I appreciate it. It was tough there. I wasn't I wasn't enjoying it for a little while, but made it through. Persevered. Was able to come out on the other side a better person. So, uh, check out my vlog. Subscribe to the channel if you like these videos. I'm going to try to come out with more coding content. I appreciate you. Have a good day. Wherever you are, whenever you are. I want to go to sleep and drink lots of water because I'm thirsty. My nose itches. Okay, you guys have a good day now.